Okay, and what? I guess what I could do is just 
Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to our uh, Sunday morning service. And I know it's a 4th of July weekend, and it's a wonderful day out. It's a hot weekend out, and I know people are out traveling over the holiday weekend, but I'm glad that you're here today because we, we've got a wonderful service planned today, and we know the presence of the Lord is in our service today. And, and as we get ready to start, let's all stand together today and Let's open up in prayer this morning and let's just ask the Lord to come and move today. Amen. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this morning. I thank you, Father, for the opportunity we have to be gathered together into your house just to give you honor and glory and praise. And Father, as we gather together this morning on this weekend service, we just pray, Father, that you would minister and bless this time together in your house. God, I thank you for these that have gathered together, and we just pray a blessing over them this morning. Father, for those that are out traveling and, uh, Father, enjoying their holiday weekend here, Father, we just pray that you will bless them. And Lord, minister strength to them, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, let's greet one another this morning and let's uh, sing together. Amen.
prayer should be. God bless America. God send a revival to America. Mighty Jesus. God bless America.
America. That's how we do it. By not being quiet. When they tell us to be quiet and don't talk about Jesus, we will still be higher and louder, lifting his name. Because he said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me.
all just lift our hands together this morning and let's just get uh, into that presence of the atmosphere of this uh, uh, of the Lord that's in this place this morning and let's just be aware today that he's here right now he's here amen and he's here today and uh, he's moving in this time so whatever needs you have today we believe this morning that there is a there's a miracle that God Uh, can move in your life upon right now. So even as we're singing and believing that uh, the uh, the Holy Spirit is moving and welcoming in this place as we sung that He's here and welcomed, we're aware of His presence is in this place. And as we're aware that He is in this place where two or three are gathered, here He is in the middle of this place to work dynamically. And so we're going to believe that these miracles can be accomplished today. So let's just agree together this morning that God's going to meet needs together in this place. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the atmosphere, they're all around you. But I do not want you to fear. I want to tell you this morning, you have nothing to fear. Fear itself will come, but do not worry. I am your peace. I am watching and I am listening and I hear everything that's going on. There is nothing to doubt, nothing to fear. Many, many are confused. This world is confused. The atmosphere is confused. But I am not confused. I am Jehovah and I will accomplish everything I set out to do. Amen. Let's just lift our hands together this morning and we're going to just believe God today that as we believe, we speak forth today with our prayers and by the power of God that's in us, greater is he that's in us and he that's in the world. And the prayers that we speak are greater than the enemies that are around us in this world and our prayers Amen. It changes our atmospheres that are trying to come against us, and it sets the atmosphere for the presence of the Lord. Amen. So, Father, we thank you today for your word. We thank you for, Father, that you said you will minister where two or three are gathered. We thank you, Lord, today that you've given us, Father, uh, ability to gather together to sing and to hear your word and to pray and to be blessed together in fellowship. And God, as we've come together now, we're asking, Lord, for you to move over this church. And Father, uh, let the waters of life and the waters of refreshing uh, come over and pour over us today. And we thank you, Lord, that, uh, Father, that we are sure in you and we're confident in you. Our hope remains in you, Lord, today. And we know that there's salvation in you and there's power in you and our strength is in you and our joy is in you. And Father, we look to you today and we thank you for it. So Lord, today in this church, there's Father, uh, these that are believing God for you to move in their lives. And God, we're praying now that God, you'll move and do this, these things in their life today. So God, I just pray this morning with them in agreement that God, you work in a mighty and a powerful way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, give the Lord a good hand clap of praise this morning and you can be seated. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Well, it's good to see everybody here today and we're going to have our ushers, amen, make their way forward and we're going to receive our morning tithing and offering. And uh, as we as we receive that, um, well, this is also uh, our our first Sunday of the month, and so we're gonna re, we're gonna uh, receive our mission offering uh, as well. So if you've come uh, with a mission offering, thank you for that. 
We always uh, appreciate all the mission offering that's sown to all the missionaries, and that mission offering goes uh, uh, to several different missionaries that are in this, uh, that we support in this church, and I know they, they appreciate every, uh, every gift that's sown in this uh, church as well to go to their missions to help fund uh, their schools, uh, their Bible schools, and their saving, seeing souls saved, and people filled with the Holy Spirit, and pastors trained and called and start, start churches and all kinds of things. So thank you for giving in the missions today. And so let's pray over our offering this morning, and then we'll receive it, and then we'll go through some announcements together this morning. Amen. Let's pray. Father, I thank you that as we gather together on this first day of a new month of July, that God, I thank you that you've kept us this far into this year. And God, as we're sowing into this offering today, I thank you, Lord, that you're giving Father, you, uh, you're given so much to us, and you've blessed us tremendously in a resource, and God, we're thanking you today that we can sow back into your kingdom. And Father, as we sow into your kingdom, I pray, Father, today that you would open up continued doors of opportunity, continued doors, Father, that we would see, Father, uh, uh, Father, these avenues that you've opened and led us to, and Lord, that we'd walk through, and we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for that. Here is a baby bottle. I'm going to give to somebody, uh, too. This was up here. I noticed that. Also, if there's any others, you can continue to bring those in, and we'll make sure that uh, those go to Sister Bailey, who takes them down to the Flint Right to Life. Amen. And those whole things go down there, and uh, they're blessed by that. Well, the air conditioning that was supposed to be in the lobby this past Friday, it didn't get installed. It was back ordered because they've got so many uh, units on order. So uh, it's actually being shipped out to us right now. And so once it arrives, they said that it'll be installed and the new installed date for us is going to be July 11th out there. So uh, uh, we're, but we have our other ACs going. And so it was nice to be able to come in and still have the other ACs going in that this morning uh, in here. And uh, so we have, um, uh, we have that still going forward. And we have an update on the sign. So we're going to put that up. Uh, so there is a picture down forward. So this is uh, one of the updates of the sign that the board is talking about this morning. And this is one of the things we wanted to show you about. One of the great uh, uh, new signs that uh, we're looking at. It has a, a big uh, 37 and a half inch uh, tall uh, display front. Uh, uh, by uh, by 87 and a half inch uh, length, and so it uh, it is about double the size of the current whiteboard uh, that you see to the left there. Uh, it takes the white tiles down off the column. It puts up a whole brand new re uh, brand new brick, and uh, it puts up a nice brick, and it gives us a new nice. Um, uh, a new nice LED uh, a 10 pixel, a P10, which is a really a high definition uh, pixel board, uh, which is um, a lot of the different boards they wanted us to go with were different variations of boards, but uh, a P10 board is, it was a very high definition one that, will, uh, that was good from 10 meters away. And uh, so they were 16 and 20s and so on, but this is a really good definition board. And then they were going to, you know, fix up and, and stain some of the uh, existing um, uh, wood that's there and fix that up there on the base too. So that's some of the uh, that's some of the design that uh, is being looked at here today that uh, uh, that we're talking about. And that that new LED panels uh, are uh, are coming, and we appreciate that. And uh, so we're talking about that, and uh, so we wanted to show that out for, to everybody and to uh, thank everybody for continually giving and supporting and uh, as well. So thank you. Uh, thank you all for that giving. Amen. And then also uh, continue all now uh, for uh, uh, July 14th. So just uh, two Saturdays from yesterday, so two weeks away. We're going to have a memorial service for Brother Larry St. Marie. Sister Linda's helping me on that, uh, uh, bring in food. And so if you would like to help bring in food, please talk to Sister Linda about it. We're going to have a 11 a.m. service here in the church. So uh, if you're, we, need to, uh, you, we need to have people bring in uh, food for that service. So there'll be a service here from 11 to 12, roughly. And then 12 o'clock, there'll be a luncheon in the gym that day. So please put that on your calendars, and you can be part of the uh, service and uh, then be part of the uh, uh, luncheon and bring food in for the luncheon as well. 
And then also, uh, then the bulletins, there are other announcements as well, so you can pick those up uh, and make sure that you get all the dates. There's going to be kids' camps and youth camps, all kinds of camps getting ready to start. Thursday night, I don't want to forget this, Thursday night is going to be Senior Saints Night. They're going to have a dinner Thursday night at 6 o'clock, and so they're going to have their dinner Thursday night. And then July 10th, they're taking a bus trip up to Alpena and going on a glass-bottom boat ride and all kinds of fun things. And so uh, uh, the seniors are getting ready to go on all kinds of fun trips here coming up too. So, all right. So, all right. Well, let's go on forward this morning. Sister Lynn, if you put up the scripture text in Matthew for me. If we'll turn to the book of Matthew chapter 19, want us to go there and let's all stand if we can. As we read Matthew chapter 19, starting in verse 13, uh, going down to verse 15. And it says this. It says, Then uh, were there brought unto him little children, that he should put his hands on them and pray. And the disciples rebuked them. But Jesus said, Suffer the little children, and forbid them not to come unto me. For of such is the kingdom of heaven. And he laid his hands on them and departed thence. Father, I thank you today for your word. And I thank you, Father, for the power of your word and for the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And I pray, Father, this morning that you would minister strength and might into our inner man today. And Father, I pray for the anointing and the unction of the Holy Spirit. That God, you will stir and move and minister and Father, just bless our time in this place today. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 You may be seated this morning. All right, so this morning, I want us to look at this verse in verse 15. And I want us to look at how uh, on, this, uh, uh, on this weekend about the strength. Because when we come to Independence Day, we think about, uh, we think about the strength of our country and we talk, about, uh, we talk about the founding of our country. And we talk about, uh, we always think of the verse, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. And uh, we receive an inheritance from uh, God when we uh, trust in Him and rely on Him. But I want us to consider on this day, on this uh, uh, Independence Day weekend here that's, that we're uh, partaking in this weekend, I want us to consider this. I want us to consider the strength of God and how God has blessed us through our lives to get us to this point where his strength is sufficient for every need and he and he doesn't uh, and he is no respect to a person great or small. And so this morning we look at our country and we see the strength of our country and we see people fighting and giving their lives for our country because they believe in the strength and the ability of the mission and the function of our country and what it stands for and what it believes in. But Jesus, this is the kingdom of God here. And he says, such is the kingdom of heaven. He says, suffer not the little children to come unto me, forbid them not but to come, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. And so here's this kingdom, a kingdom not of this world, but the kingdom of heaven. And he says, here's the strength of heaven is to let them come. So let all the children come. And he said, when they've come, he laid his hands on him. So I want us to talk about the strength of God's hands this morning. So think about the strength of God's hands. Because when I think about how he laid his hands on them, and then they departed. Uh, when I read this scripture, it, this, this particular phrase stuck out to me. And he laid his hands on them. And then I was thinking about this. I was thinking about... As God's children, what we need to do is we need to be coming to him and we need to be saying, Lord, I want to come to you and I need to be asking and saying, Lord, Jesus, would you lay your hands on us this morning? Would you lay your hands on me? Would you lay your hands upon us and bless us? Would you lay your hands on us? And, uh, and would you uh, don't suffer uh, the little children to come unto him, but let him come and he'll lay his 
hands on you. We need the Lord's hands to be laid on us this morning. And so the strength of his hands that are laid upon you when his hand touches you, these hands represent uh, a whole vast variety of things that I want to look at today. But when we look at God's hands uh, in the Old Testament, the prophets talked about God's hands equaling the strength. And when it looks at the God's hands in the Old Testament, God's right hand refers in the Bible as a common speech uh, to talk about the omnipotence of God because God is all powerful this morning, church. And when they talk about God's mighty right hand of power, when it God's able to take his right hand and subdue his enemies uh, and uh, make his enemies his footstool. Is there anything too hard for him? He's able to do it by his powerful right hand. Uh, it talks about his omnipotence. So he's all powerful. This is how the strength of God. He's, he's stronger than any one nation. He's more powerful than any, uh, he's more powerful than any one army. But, uh, but together, when we come together, this is the kingdom of heaven. We, we come together and when we come under his uh, when we come under his uh, 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 umbrella of his kingdom, we come to him into his, into his altar area and we say, Lord, would you lay your hand on us? And he takes his hand and he touches us. And when he touches us, uh, uh, his anointing touches us and, and a tangible touch uh, comes to us. And, and when that tangible touch comes and touches us, it changes us. And, and this is what happens uh, in Isaiah. This is what he says in Isaiah 41.10. Isaiah talks about how God God's hand, when he touches us, is, <clears throat> is a hand of authority. He tells the people, don't be afraid. He says, fear not. Don't be afraid or don't be dismayed. He says, for I'm with you. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. So he says, don't be afraid, I'm with you. Don't be in a state of discouragement or don't be dismayed because he says, I've got a mighty right hand of power and I'm gonna uphold you with my hand of righteousness. And so when everything looks unsteady, I want you to know that he's got us in his hand and his hand has got us right where he needs us to be this morning, church, amen. And so if if we, if we coming unto the Lord and if we have an attitude in our heart that says, Lord, uh, would you just touch us this morning? Would you lay your hand on your child this morning? Would you lay your hands on your children this morning? The Lord will lay his hands on us uh, and he says, I've got you in my hand and I'm upholding you and I'm not going to let you go this morning. And Isaiah says it's a hand of authority that we can believe in, that we can trust in. Amen. And he has the authority to say it and do it. Jeremiah talks to us about the hand of God, about the arms of God. And he says, God's got the arms of strength in Jeremiah 32 verse 17. He talks about, oh, Lord God. Oh, he's a sovereign God. He says, behold, you've made the heavens and the earth by thy great power and thine outstretched arms, and there is nothing too hard for thee. He has an outstretched arms today that he says that I've got everything under my control. Here is a sovereign God that is ruling and reigning over everything this morning. And he says that we can call him our heavenly father and we are his child and he said suffer the little children to come unto me for such is the kingdom of heaven and so this morning if you're his child he said suffer the little children let them come he says I'm going to let them come to my altar I'm going to let them come to my throne in fact I've made a way that they can come to the throne and lay all the petitions they need at my altar and with my great power and out outstretched arm. I can take my mighty right hand of power and I can lay my hand on them and I can touch them and I can change them. I can subdue armies. I can change situations. I can cause leaders to rise and to fall. I can make countries rise and to fall. I can make things turn around in a moment. He says, but suffer the little children to come to me. Some may trust in chariots and some may trust in horses, but when 
we trust in the name of the Lord, when we know that his hand is greater than our hand, when his hand is bigger than our hand, and we suffer to come to him and say, Lord Jesus, would you lay your hand on us? And would you touch us in our situation? He'll change your situation. He can change a country. He can change a world. Because there's some children of God that understand when Jesus said, suffer the little children to come. There may be some people that want to stop the little children from coming. But he, Jesus is saying, no, no, no. Let them come. This is the kingdom of heaven. They're free to come. Free to come. Isaiah said he has the authority to Speak it. And Jeremiah says he has the power and the ability and the strength to do it. Psalm chapter 118 verse 16 says, It's the Lord's right hand that's lifted high. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. It's done mighty things. There's mighty things. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and are safe. Because the righteous can come to find safety under the shadow of the Almighty. So when the Lord's outstretched arm is lifted high and done many things, it casts the shadow. And we can go under the shadow of the Lord's almighty shadow and we can find our dwelling place there. I, that's what Psalm 91 says. We can find our secret place in the Most High. And his dwelling place is in the shadow of the Almighty. Because he's got his arms lifted high and it's casting that shadow for us to find safety in. And when we find safety in the shadow of the Master's hand, we know that God's got all kinds of things that he's already done. We know he's already in the business of doing mighty things in the present. And we know that we've got the scripture that tells us what all kinds of things he's getting ready to do. And so together, when we put it all together, we can agree with the psalmist that says this, the Lord's hands is lifted high and the Lord's done mighty things. And we can look at our life and say, we know that the Lord's lifted high and that he's done mighty things in my life. And I know he's done mighty things in your life. So let's testify together today and say, Yea, though there may be a stumbling block in this world of the adversary that's trying to make us fall, yet will I trust uh, that the Lord is lifted high and that he has done mighty things. Uh, and though none go with me, so yet I will follow because greater is he that's in me than he that's in this world because he has done mighty things. He has done mighty things. And so here he is, God doing mighty things. God's blessing people. In Exodus, we talk about no, uh, Moses. Excuse me. Moses. And as long as Moses' arms were outstretched, the people, the people of Israel were winning the battle. But, but human hands, we get tired of holding our hands up. We have a limited ability. I mean, even the people that have those strong muscles, they, they, are, they, they have a limited ability to hold their hands up. And Moses' hands started drifting down. And when his hands began to fall, what began to happen? The opposing army began to overtake. But what happened when they began to prop his arms up? Here he is. They began to win the army. Uh, the army of Israel began to overtake and win again. It's because, it's because of this. It's to show us that God is blessing them. To show us that there's power. That God's power was through, working through Moses. And while hands were being lifted, God was blessing through uplifted hands. Because there is mighty right hand of the Lord's lifted up. Mighty things are being done. And so we can't trust in man's hand, but God working through him to show us that God is able to do something through, through a, a nation of Israel if we'll trust and have faith in him. But today, church, we understand that when we come into the presence of God and we lift our hands, even if it's for 10 seconds or 20 seconds or 30 seconds, whatever we can lift our hands for, it's a sign to show God, God, 
I lift my hands in this place today because I know you've got your hand already been uplifted from generation to generation, from decade to decade, from time bygone to bygone era before us. Your hand has been lifted up and you have done mighty things. You have spoken and this world was created. You, you spoke and it shut lions' mouths because you, you sent an angel to help Daniel. You, you, you sent a word and the word of the Lord came and there stood Jesus like the son, image of the Son of God. Nebuchadnezzar said the image of Jesus in the fiery furnace uh, and you send your word and done mighty things uh, because your arms are outstretched in this world when those three Hebrews, uh, a Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego would not bow to a golden image. Your name was greater than that. Your arms uh, were high and lifted up and mighty things uh, were done and accomplished over that. When Jesus Christ came into this world, your arms were high and mighty things were done. Hundreds of prophecies that were only fulfilled and could only be fulfilled through Jesus Christ. Only through looking at Jesus Christ life could only be accomplished through him. And when you look at his scriptures and you look at the, and you look at the prophecies and you see Jesus coming to earth to be our Savior, we see it's God's hands being lifted high and mighty things being done in the earth for us. And so when we come together and we lift our hands, it's a sign to say, Lord, I thank you that your hands have already been lifted high over us. And we lift our hands as a point of surrender to you. And we surrender ourselves to you today. And we say, fill us up. And we say, yeah, we empty ourselves out. And we say, fill us up of your, of your goodness and your mercy. and Lay your hands on us. We're reaching out to you, Lord, to lay your hands on us. Suffer, oh Lord, you said, suffer the little children to come to you. Lord, you want us to come this morning. You want us to come. Amen. His right hand talks about strength and it talks about authority. We talk about Jesus. Jesus, when he left the earth, he, he, Paul the apostle said he's sitting at the right hand of the Father making intercession for us. He's sitting at a seat of power and authority. And we see Jesus in John chapter 1, verse 1, having, uh, being the second person of the Godhead, being equal with God in all ways is God. This is what it says. It says, in the beginning was the Word. It's important for us to know that Jesus was always there. Jesus is always there. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. And without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life and the life was the light of men. And then this is what? The light shines in darkness, but the darkness cannot comprehend it. It comprehended it not. So this is what he's saying. In the beginning, we see God in the Old Testament having strength and authority by his mighty right hand. And we see Jesus now being called the word of God, the son of God, the word coming from heaven to earth now. And we see him. So being called the Son of God and being called the Word and being equal with God in all points is God. In fact, in John 10, it talks about when Jesus says, I'm the good shepherd and I am the door and I am the way. He's equating himself with God and he's equating himself with uh, Moses in the burning bush when Moses is saying, who do you say I, that is sending me back to the old Pharaoh to tell tell?" Pharaoh to let my people go. God said, tell them I am that I am sending you. And when Jesus is saying in John chapter 10, I am the good shepherd and I am the door and I am the way and the truth and I am the life. Uh, what's he saying? He's saying, I am that I am has sent me and I am God in the flesh. Uh, and when you're looking at me, when you see me, you have seen the Father because I, the word was with God in the beginning 
beginning and the word is God and the word was God. And so he's saying, here's Jesus in the flesh now, God and man coming together. And now as they come together, we see Jesus in the flesh on the earth, able to have a hand that's able to literally now be able to touch somebody and be able to see a hand that touches somebody. Before the prophets talked about God's hand that comes out, but God is a spirit. And, uh, and so as God is a spirit, we have to consider what a sp God's spirit is. And, and, what, and so we understand that God's spirit is, uh, is going to look different and is going to be different than us in the body because, uh, because a body encapsulates, uh, uh, holds in what our spirit is uh, and, our, and our soul right at the present. But, but right now, uh, Jesus left heaven. He came down and took on a form of a man. And in that form of a man... He became, he put on flesh and he, and as he walked on the earth, God in the flesh, he had a hand and in that hand, he was able to touch and he was able to feel and he was able to do, touch in all ways, just like we are. And so the devil tried on many occasions to tempt him and to try him and to cause him to sin so that he would sin and be corrupted. So that he would fall just like Adam did. But what, what happened is what the first Adam did is sin. Jesus, who's called the second Adam by the Apostle Paul in Romans, he didn't sin. He was faithful and he overcame that sin. He overcame the temptation. In Hebrews, he was tempted in all points like we are, yet without sin. And now he became the, the atonement for our salvation. But while he came to earth, he was able to touch. And so God now, from the Old Testament, from the prophet's words of God's moving in time and seasons, we now see Jesus walking in places, touching people. Mark chapter 6, verse 2 and 3. And when it was the Sabbath day, he began to teach them in the synagogues. And many hearing him were astonished. And they said, from whence had this man heard these things? What wisdom is it that was given unto him and that even such mighty works are wrought by his hands, his hands. They're looking at him, and in verse 3 they're saying, he's just a carpenter's son. Isn't this just a carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James and uh, Jose and the son of Judah and Simon? Are not these his sisters here with us? And they were offended. They were offended at him for being able to do those things with his hands and touch and heal and work in this way. But let me tell you, when, when God came down in Jesus Christ and when the Son of God came unto earth for us, when Jesus came in and the hands of blessing revealed in the earth for us this morning, church, it was revealed to us that Jesus' hands were compassionate hands. They were miracle working hands that where Jesus went, he was able to do astounding things. He was able to do wonder working things that when he touched people, there was compassion that flowed from him and that he was moved with compassion and was able Able to work uh, uh, in people's lives uh, because uh, uh, he was able to see needs and touch needs and work in needs and he had compassionate hands to work and people got offended at the work he did he's just a carpenter he just had working hands he just had working hands never forget it never forget it this is the thing sister Dorothy tells me shake your hand and she says, you're getting calluses, that's good. You're getting working hands, right? So, so she tells me. I will tell that story forever, Sister Dorothy. She tells me, you're getting working hands, that's good. That's what Jesus is at. He had working hands. He was a carpenter. But he had ministry hands. He had miracle working hands in him. And these people got offended at him 
because he had calloused hands of a worker, but he was able to do miracles with those hands. And this is what his hands were. His hands were praying hands because in, when he was found in the garden, he was found praying. He prayed to his father. And this is how I know that this Trinity, even though it's not a word in the Bible, but we know it exists because he's found in the Bible praying in the garden. And he says, Abba, Father, let your will be done. Not my will, your will be done because Jesus in the garden praying he said he knew the times that were upon him in the crucifixion and he knew what was coming and he knew uh, what was about ready to go where his sweat became like great drops of blood falling to the ground for your sweat to be turned to blood was wrestling in the flesh. And so for his hands to be working and to pray, there had to be a great wrestling. But he had compassionate hands. He had working hands, but he had or praying hands. But Jesus had showed us hands that were just like hands the prophets prophesied about. He had hands of authority. He stretched out his hands and he said, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how I long and I weep over you and how I long to gather you together like a, a hen gathers her chicks together under her wings. How Jesus gathers and says this, come to me, all you who are labor and heavy laden. He stretches out his hands and says, come to me, all you who are labor and heavy laden. He reaches out his hands and he says, come to me. He, he says, take my yoke upon you. Let me take your yoke from you. He, he takes the yoke from us and he touches us. We come back uh, to the verse in Mark chapter 9, verse 27. Jesus' hands were powerful and authoritative hands because Jesus took him by the hand, lifted it up, and he arose. Uh, Jesus had hands and power and authority because there was a death uh, and a dumb spirit. There was a demonic spirit that had attached himself to a father's son. And, and, and it said many times this this person's son would throw himself into the fire and foam at the mouth and do all kinds of things. And he came to Jesus and he said, Jesus, there is a foul spirit that's inside this person. Can you help my son? And Jesus said, foul spirit, come out of him. And he, Jesus cast a spirit out. And that foul spirit had to obey the voice of Jesus. And he came out and that boy fell down like he was dead. So much that the people thought that that man's son was dead. But Jesus, with his hands, reached down there and picked him up and lifted him up. And the guy got up and he arose. This is Jesus' hands here we're talking about. It was a voice of authority. It was a voice of the Son of God. The voice of the sounds of the mighty waters of heaven commanding the devils of hell to take their place and leave that that person's son right there alone and and when he fell down like dead and everybody says he's dead Jesus says no and he reaches down and he picks him up today when when we need to be reached down and picked up Jesus is still right here reaching down picking us up Jesus has hands that still has power over spirits of infirmity you know, sometimes we get sick in our life just because our bodies now don't live forever because of sin. So sickness comes. But, you know, we get through sicknesses and we get healthy again. But, but then eventually our bodies age. But one day we're going to live forever as we get our glorified body. But until that time, we go through a process of sickness and healing, sickness and healing these things. But there is a spirit of affirmity that attaches to people. And there was a woman with a spirit of infirmity. And Jesus has the authority over the spirits of infirmity. And in Mark chapter, uh, Luke chapter 13, 13 rather, this is what it said. And it says, and behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years. And he laid his hands on her and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. 
This is what happened. Here was a woman who had a spirit of infirmity. She was bowed up altogether, bind up. She couldn't even lift herself up. And when Jesus saw her, she said, woman, thou art loosed. He said, thou art loosed of thine infirmity. And he said, when he had laid his hands on her, immediately she was made straight and glorified God. There's power in his hands. There's power in his hands. Then, back to Matthew 19. So I read this verse this week. And in Matthew 19, then I read, Suffer the little children to come. We want them. I want them all to come. And we're looking at little children physically coming to Jesus, right? But, but I'm a child of God and you're a child of God. If you're a child of God, he's saying, Suffer us to come. Don't hold us back. Don't let anything hold us back from coming. He said, for such is the kingdom of heaven. He said, let him come. And he said, he laid his hands on him. When he laid his hands on him, he says, there's a transferring of an, a blessing and an anointing. And there's a power that's transferred to Jesus to us. When he touches us, it changes us. How many people understand that when we asked Jesus to forgive us, it was because we came to an altar. We came maybe to a physical altar, or we came to a proverbial altar, but we came to an altar somewhere, and we said, Jesus, forgive me my sin. And he touched us, and he cleansed us, and he made us brand new. And see, that was him touching us. And then when we say, Lord, see, Jesus went away and he said, if I go, don't go away, I can't send the Holy Ghost. So, so he went away and he dispatched the Holy Spirit from heaven to come to earth. And now the Holy Spirit comes to earth and it's a gift for believers. And so then we come and we say, Lord, I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And we get into a position again at the altar, either at a physical altar or wherever your altar was that you made. And you said, Lord, I need to be touched and I need to be filled and I need to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And, and he touched us and he filled us that was Jesus touching us with his hand of power and our life filling us with the Holy Spirit and then and then the next question is he says this when's the last time we've asked him to touch us so today I want to ask him Lord I want you to lay your hands on me and touch me because I need to be touched by the master because just like I needed to be saved and just like I needed to be filled with the Holy Spirit, just like I need to be touched by Jesus every day because if I'm not touched by Jesus, I can't, I can't, I can't keep going in my life uh, close to him because the, the more distant you become day in, and day out, the day goes by that we don't have a relationship with him. And so we need him to be close to us. He's willing. He's got the power. He's invited us. He's saying, will you ask? Then to the world, this is what he says. To those that invite me in, to those that allow me to work in power, this is the power that I give to you. Mark chapter 16 and verse 18, it says, They shall take up serpents, and they shall take up scorpions. And if they drink up any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They, we who've been touched by Jesus' hands, we shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Because when we've been touched by Jesus, that tells us that there's a transference of something, and it's the only thing that we can think about why, why when Jesus says, uh, I got to go away when I go away, greater works than these shall they do when I go to my father, because I go to my father for you, because when I go away, I'm going to have so many more disciples uh, that I'm going to touch uh, and I'm going to consume. And when I touch you, I'm walking in your physical presence now. 
But when I go back to my father and sit at the right hand of his power and authority with his mighty right hand outstretched power and authority and the Holy Spirit is released and our hand touches your soul and our hand touches your spirit. And then it's not just one physical person, God, Jesus in the God man form walking in the earth showing his ability anymore. But now there's Christians all over the globe walking around touched by Jesus filled with the Holy Ghost uh, praying in the Spirit working under the unction of the anointing of the Holy Spirit it changes the world because when we're touched by God it changes us and the power transfers into us and so we can lay hands on people and we can see the same transference transfer to them and then James tells us my final scripture if our musician make their way back to the platform James chapter 5 and verse 14 is anyone among you sick it says he should call on the church elders and the, the spiritual guides and they should pray over him anointing him with oil in the Lord's name and the prayer that is of faith will save him who is sick and the Lord will restore him and if he has committed sins he will be Forgiven. So that's the amplified version there for us this morning. And as I'm looking at these versions, and I'm looking at these scriptures, and I'm thinking about it all, it goes back and it takes my mind to the place where it says, suffer the little children to come to me. It all starts like this. It takes a touch of Jesus for us to be able to minister and see our lives changed, for us to see other people's lives changed. And there is a day... Uh, and there is a time that Jesus has appointed for us to be touched by him, and it's today. He wants you to be touched and changed by him right now. He has power to save. He has power to heal. He has power over authority. He's, he has power over devils. He has power to cure diseases. And in Luke chapter 9, he said he called his disciples together, and he gave them power over devils and to cure diseases. He gave them power. So we see this together this morning. And so there this morning in this place are Christians touched by Jesus with the ability and the anointing of Jesus to see the works of Jesus in this world. And we can change this community because the strength of, of, our, of our nation and the strength of our church and the strength of our state and the strength of this world depends on the strength that starts right here in this church, me and you being touched by Jesus. Thank God for people who found liberty in Christ that wanted to come to a land that said they wanted to worship God how they want to worship God. And so, they, so today I can stand freely before you and preach a message without fear of repercussion of what the, of what the world may do. Thank God for that. So this morning, we need to pray and say, Lord, touch us. Burn in us your power and your anointing. So this morning, this is what I'd like for us to do. Let's all stand if you're able to stand. And let's join hands if you're able to stand by somebody and take them by the hand as a point of contact. Because Jesus has outstretched arms. Let's have outstretched arms as a point of contact. Just if you're standing by somebody, we're going to pray together before we take communion. And we're going to pray this way. I want you to pray for a couple things. One, pray for Jesus to lay his hand on us and continually touch us. Pray this morning that the Lord would minister into this place, meet needs. Pray for salvation of our lost loved ones to be uh, cultivated and to be brought in. Pray this morning for God to just continue to work in miracle working ways. Pray for the demonic activity of the world to be uh, to cease and to be pushed back and allow the glory of God to be on display. And just pray for the will of God to continue to be exercised this morning. God, have your way. Amen. Let's pray together. Father, I thank you. You've got your hands outstretched over us today. I thank you, Lord, today that you've touched us. Thank you that you've touched my spirit. Thank you that you rejuvenated me. Thank you that you made us a brand new. Thank you, Lord, that old ways are gone. Old, old ways are passed away. 
thank you, Lord, I'm made brand new by the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that in you is life. Thank you, life is in us this morning. And Lord, I thank you today that we're touched by the Master. Lord, we bind every principality and every power of darkness that's stopping the works and the wills and the, that's hindering the moving of God's plans and purposes in this world today. We're binding every demonic force and adver, ad, adversary that's stopping the will of God in our lives in this place today. And God, we're praying for open doors of opportunity. Even doors that were, God, maybe previously open. Oh, God, we didn't know how, uh, Father, we stepped through. We didn't step through, whatever. Lord, we pray today. You've touched us to be a witness. So, God, help us to be that witness. And we affirm today to you that, God, where you lead, we follow. And, God, where you open doors, we walk through. And, God, where you put your will, and where you put your word, we follow. And God, where you direct, we go. And God, I thank you today that your word is burning in us like a fire that's shut up in our bones. That your word, Father, is mighty and powerful. And I thank you this morning for salvation of our lost loved ones. Thank you for continued fire of the Holy Spirit baptisms to burn. Thank you, God, for working wonders. Thank you, God, for moving. Thank you, God, for ministering. So, Father, I pray today blessings over this congregation. Thank you, God, today for growing us. Thank you, God, for multiplying us. Thank you, God, for ministering to us. Thank you, God, for uplifting us. Thank you, God, for, for breaking us through our barriers. And thank you, God, for Jesus' hand that is resting upon us. Lord, we ask for you to touch us today. We need your touch. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's all lift our hands this morning and thank the Lord. Father, we thank you today that your spirit is in us. Thank you for resting your hand on us. Thank you, Lord, today for touching us. We receive it this morning. Hallelujah. Blessed be your name. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. Bless your name, Lord. Glory to your name, Jesus. Bless your holy name. Hallelujah. Blessings and honor.
Amen. Let's lift our hands one more time before we take communion together. And this is what I want us to do. I just want us to thank the Lord that he's given us this opportunity to trust him today and to say, Lord Jesus, lay your hand on us. And as you lay your hand on us, we'll be your servant. And as your servant, we'll be, we'll be uh, honored to do your will in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, today. Thank you, Lord, today. As you speak to us, Lord, we'll follow. Where you lead, we'll follow. What you prompt us to do, we'll do. Thank you, Lord, today. Bless your name, Lord. Help us, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for touching our lives. Thank you, Lord, we're not what we used to be. Thank you, Lord, you're changing us. Thank you, Lord, you're making us who you want us to be. Thank you, Lord, you're healing us. And thank you, Lord, you're making us new. Thank you, Lord, your uh, Father, uh, Lord, you're preparing for us each and every day, a future and a hope. Thank you, Lord. We bless your name. We come to you, Lord, today. This is the kingdom of heaven. You lay in your hands on us in this place today. We need you, Lord, to lay your hands on us. Thank you, Jesus. Bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Let's uh, let's have the communion servers come. And I'm going to have them pass out this. And it's a good time for us to take communion this morning. And I'm going to let them sing as they pass out the communion. And we can just worship together. And uh, they can sing. And uh, you can hold on to the communion until we're all served. So you can be seated if you like this morning. But we just are so thankful today to be in the presence of God under the unction of the Holy Spirit. To sense His will, to sense His power and His greatness. So thank you, Lord, for being here today in our presence. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Go ahead and sing. Just go ahead and take one under the cup as your is your bread and you can separate them and hold them into two pieces while they sing this morning. 